All right, uh, this is a demonstration or a description of the wheel uh, or inside move, however you want to refer to it as. I believe right now we, we use a sign, it's the five play. Basically, it's, it's our bread and butter, honestly, for younger ages. If you guys can, can learn this move, uh, I know you've heard me say it before, it is a giant advantage. And it is well worth spending almost, I don't know, a significant amount of time on your practices early on. Work on it. It's not going to go well at first. It's not going to go real well in a game at first. Do not give up on it. Keep working on it, and it will pay off tenfold. It will separate you from the other teams. Promise. And basically how it's going to work. So the uh, as a coach, you may know he's going to steal. It may just be a given that he's going to steal. You may think he's going to steal because you read a sign whatever it may be, but this is when we got a guy on second base, okay? So to teach our pitchers, um, you know, we're going to teach our pitchers as a right-handed pitcher, uh, and, I, and I probably can't see my feet here, but we're going to teach our pitchers to get a sign. It's going to be, it doesn't matter if it's fastball, curveball, whatever it is, uh, or at the five play. So we're going to come set, and we're going to look at that runner at second base, okay? And as we pitch, we're going to bring our leg up, and then we get to this point, boom, look home and pitch, okay? We're going to do that every time we pitch, okay? Uh, and that's assuming the lead runner is at second. If you've got a lead runner at third, you're going to look at third when you pitch. Boom, and then snap, look. It has got to be a quick look home, okay? It's not a slow look. It's also not leg up and, and look. It is straight up, look, and pitch, okay? It's going to give you the best opportunity to set up the play, hold the runners on, pick off the runners, and also have the best chance to actually throw a strike because you're picking up your target quicker. So basically what you're going to do again, when we do the five play, you're going to get your sign, you're going to come set, okay? You're going to pick your leg up, look home at the time it's the highest point, and instead of stepping towards home, you're going to turn and step back, okay? So again, watch, it's going to be simple, okay? Straight up, look, and then you can look back, and at that point, the runner is going to take off, okay? We want the runner to take off. Um, it's okay. That's the setting. You're setting the trap with it, okay? And when he takes off, what's going to happen is once you have stepped over the mound, okay, uh, on the other side of the mound, um, you're free to do whatever you want, okay? And technically, you may have some people try to tell you or umpires tell you, you can't throw to an unoccupied base. That's true. Unless the runner is moving to that base and you are trying to retire the runner, then you are more than welcome to do that if they know the rule. But for the sake of this, it shouldn't really matter because he's going. So he's going to take off, okay? Once you've looked home, probably, because he thinks you're pitching, your, your pitcher is going to step off the back. Now he's free to do what he wants. When he steps off the back, he wants to start running towards third base, third baseman needs to go to the bag, okay? We're going to watch this runner. This runner is going to take off towards third base. If I can simply beat the runner there and tag him, great. That's option number one. Option number two is to get between him and the base, turn him around, and have him go back to second. You need to teach your second baseman to be at that bag, okay? And then the throw is going to go to the bag and make sure that the run, when the pitcher is in this position and running back, he is on the side of the runner. So he's not throwing over the top of him. He's throwing over the side of him. Ball's already out of the glove. Nice throw to the bag and tagged out. So option one, run, tag the runner. Option two, run, get between the runner and third, run him back, one throw. Okay. Uh, option three, he takes off running. You can't beat him there. A nice, easy throw to third. We want the throw without a play. We want the throw where he catches it, and the third baseman is now going to run him back to second. We don't want to tag at third. The only tag we want at third is if the runner basically gives himself up and gets tagged right in the chest because it's a super simple, easy throw, not complicated, runners give it up. So nice, easy throw to him running back again same thing as with the pitcher but this time the third baseman has the ball outside of the baseline throw to second base catch put the ball on the ground tag the runner we want no throws or one throw we don't want multiple throws however while that's going on 
throw to third, third's going to run him back. The pitcher is now at third as the as the guy. So you throw it early, early whenever the guy turns around and comes back, you already have somebody there. Okay, you get everybody else in on the on the on the play. Do not have the third baseman get it or the catcher get it on the play. He's got a guard here because you overthrow it. He's going to run home uncontested. Okay, first baseman simply can get over there. Outfielders can get in there. Make sure that they're not right on top of the runner of the bases. They got to be behind it in case there is an overthrow and it doesn't sail 30 feet past and there's nobody there. Uh, it is a great play. Um, if you execute it, you're going to get some cheap outs, but you're also going to keep them from running and you don't have to use a slide step in order to pitch. Um, it's a great move to do that with. Uh, and I, again, we have to do it as a club. Teach it. It'll get you out of some jams. Um, it, it, it's, it is a difference maker. The key to this is, I can't, if you look at it down the line between second and third, you got to make sure before this throw comes over here that that runner is probably a step behind that line. That way you can throw an easy throw here and have opportunity to run him back and get him out. You throw it too early, he's just going to run uh, right back to second base and not have any problem. You throw it too late, he's, you're going to have a play at third and you overthrow it and the kid's going to go home. And from the standpoint of learning this, Here's the deal. You blow it, no big deal. He was going to steal third anyway. So we run this play. It works. You're going to get some outs. And as you work it and you run it over and over and over again, uh, the other teams will eventually give up and just stay at second base. And you've won the game with, as far as the running game goes. Um, any questions on this, please ask me. Uh, it's set up by, again, making sure you're looking at second when you pitch. Leg comes up, quick look home, step towards home. And in the case of running the play, look at second. Leg comes up, quick look home. But instead of stepping towards home, you step back over the, the rubber. And you can look back. And again, they're going to execute everything else at that point by running at the runner and nice, easy throws. And uh, we again, we want the plays here, not here. Uh, you blow it here, uh, he scores. You blow it there, he probably still at second base, or at worst, he runs over to third and nobody scored. Hope that makes sense.